really sense the Holy Spirit here this morning. I don't know about you, but I really sense the presence of the Holy Spirit among us. Thank you for that. Okay, the title of my sermon this morning, How Do We Reach the Lost? Many, many people that's been Christians for 20 odd years ask that question sometimes. And it's so sad, you know, where someone would say, how do I reach the lost? But this morning I'd just like to share with you about this uh, young boy. I've heard of a young boy who struggled to listen to a rather long sermon. And after the service, the little boy asked his father, he, sa he said, what does the preacher do the rest of the week? Many kids ask that question, don't they? What does the <laughs> pastor do during the rest of the week? So the dad said, son, he said, he's a very busy man. He takes care of the church, of the church business, visit the sick, studies the Bible, and he has to take time to rest. You, you see, preaching in public is not an easy job to do. So the little boy thought about it, scratched his head. He said, he said well, Dad, listening ain't so easy either. So, <laughs> but the truth is that listening is not always easy, especially when the messages that we're hearing are challenging. Are they? <laughs> and this morning we're, we're going to open up and we'll be looking at this a few times this morning. Luke chapter 15, verses 1 to 10. So if you've got Bibles, keep your fingers there because we'll be going back and forth on these verses. Chapter 15, verses 1 to 10. Now the tax collectors and sinners were all gathering around to hear Jesus. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law muttered, this, this man welcomes sinners and eats with them. Then Jesus told them this parable. Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Doesn't he leave the 99 in the open country and go after the lost sheep until, until he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and he goes home. Then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, I have found my lost sheep. I tell you that in the same way, there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who, represent, who, who repents than over 99 righteous persons who do not need to repent. In verse 8. Or suppose a woman has ten silver coins and loses one. Doesn't she light a lamp, sweeps the house, and search carefully until she finds it? And when she finds it, she calls her friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, I have found my lost coin. In the same, I have, sorry, I have found my lost coin. In the same way, I tell you, there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Over one sinner who repents. And today's message may be challenging because I will be sharing with you about the subject of the Christian responsibility in reaching the lost. And we do have a responsibility to reach the lost. I was really challenged as I prepared for today's sermon. I really was challenged. Because the more I looked at these passages of scripture, the more I realized how I have not been responding to the lost the way Jesus thought that we should. And this message may be challenging to you this morning as it was for me. But it is the message of the Bible. It's not my message. And anyone that comes up here to speak, they speak from God's word. They speak from the Bible. We don't wake up one morning thinking, oh, what shall I talk about today? Let me see. Oh, maybe someone there has got a weakness. Let me talk about that person or, or that person. But the Holy Spirit is the, the one that puts these things into our heart so we can speak and we speak what comes from the Bible, God's mes message. 
So as such, it is not meant to make you feel guilty. Not meant to make you feel guilty. But it is meant to challenge us and sometimes requires that we be made a bit uncomfortable. I don't know if you've ever been felt uncomfortable during a sermon because you really sense that the Holy Spirit was speaking to you. So we are now going to look at these three, at these verses where I will share with you three different things that are needed in order for us to reach the lost. And you might say, I already do these things that you're going to share about. I already do this with uh, non-believers. Well, if you do, that's great. But we're going to share them anyway. So the first one, the first thing needed, I believe, is compassion. Compassion. We will struggle if we don't have, have compassion for the lost and reaching people. Jesus had the tax collectors and the sinners gathering around him, didn't he? Sinners and tax collectors gathering around, around him. Now, these are lost people who were not running from Jesus, but rather they were running to him. This is unusual, isn't it? You think they would have been running away from him, but they went. They were running to him. They were not avoiding him. They were not ignoring him or even hostile towards him. In fact, in verse 1, it says, you can bring up verse 1 again. In verse 1, it says that they were gathering around to hear him. Now that the tax collectors and sinners were all gathered around to hear Jesus. So they were not running away here. And it wasn't because Jesus compromised on sin and, and said that everything they were doing was okay. It wasn't because of that. They weren't around Jesus because he was putting on a, sh a sign, some sort of a show or signs of wonders. At this point in Luke, uh, the emphasis is on Jesus' teaching. That's all it was, Jesus' teaching. Miracles are hardly even mentioned. Here. So why the lost seek out Jesus rather than run from him? We think these people are running after Jesus instead of running away from him. Well, I believe the answer is very simple. The answer is compassion. Compassion. Jesus loved them and he showed that love with compassion instead of con condemning attitude. Instead of trying to make people feel guilty, oh, you shouldn't, you know, you smoke, you should, you'll never be saved. Oh, this is no good. You need to stop this. You need to stop that. Jesus didn't do that to people. The Bible says in verse 2 that Jesus welcomed sinners and ate with them. And it tells you there in verse 2 again. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law muttered, This man welcomes sinners and eat with them. So that Jesus again welcomes sinners and eats with them. This was Jesus' attitude towards those who were lost. That was Jesus' attitude towards them all. How do we treat those who we see living in sin? Do we ever invite them to our homes that we may be able to witness to them? Jesus welcomed them. Doesn't matter what they've done, he welcomed them despite their, their sins and their faults. He was a friend and not an enemy. Jesus had an attitude that the lost people were attracted to. Is our attitude, does our attitude attract people that don't know our Lord Jesus Christ? For us as individuals, and also as a church, to reach people, we are going to have to show and have that same love, that same accept acceptance that Jesus had. So the first thing needed for reaching the lost is, of course, com compassion. Because if we don't have, no, have compassion for people, if we don't have compassion, I think it's going to be very, very hard for us to see people saved. And the second thing I believe is needed for reaching the lost 
is effort. Effort. In Luke chapter 15, verses 3 and 5, let's read it again. Then Jesus told them this parable. Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Doesn't he leave the 99 in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulder. Joyfully put it on his shoulder. It will take diligent seeking for us to reach the lost. You know, in these uh, two parables, Jesus gives special importance to finding the lost. In the parable of the lost sheep, for example, Jesus said that the shepherd would leave the 99 sheep in the open country, and he goes after that one sheep. And in the parable of the lost coin, the woman lights a lamp, she sweeps the whole house, and she searches carefully for the lost coin, according to verse 8 here. So in both cases here, the thing that was lost had to be sought after with great effort. They didn't just say, well, just let it go. No, great effort searching for it. The shepherd did not wait for the lost sheep to come home. He didn't say, I'll wait here and eventually the sheep will come back anyway. They won't. My father had sheep and I know if, you, if a sheep is lost, it's lost. <laughs> you go and look for it or it's not going to come back. And the woman did not wait for the, for the lost coin to turn up. She said, oh, one day we'll find it. You know, sometimes you lose something at home. One day we'll, we'll find it. Don't worry about it. No. Great effort to find this lost coin. In our Christian lives and in the church, it sometimes seems that we do, unfortunately, the opposite. We tend to wait for the lost to come to us, don't we? And, and you know, sometimes we, so hopefully one, someone will be walking out there and they'll just somehow turn up and just come in. And these seats will be filled. <clears throat> We're waiting for people to come to Christ. Instead of putting an effort into bringing them to Christ. And, you know, and I know that I have been guilty. I have been guilty of this. And maybe many of us feel guilty. But feeling guilty is not going to do any good. I want, people to be, I want people to be saved, of course I do. And I do speak to people, whether there are, when I was working or now, I do speak to people about Christ. But maybe I didn't go out searching for the lost with great effort. Maybe I've spoken to people, which I have, but there was no effort in it. I told them about Christ, but that, that was the end of it. I didn't make a great effort, maybe, invite that person to our home so I can continue to, to witness to him. This has to change if we're to reach the lost like Jesus did. So the, you see the second thing needed here for reaching the lost is effort. We need to make an effort. So, so far I've shared two necess, necessity, necessary to reach the lost like Jesus did, Jesus did. The first thing needed was compassion. The second thing needed was effort. And there is also a third thing necessary for reaching the lost found in this parable as well. And the third thing is persistence. Persistence. In Luke chapter 15, verses 4 to 8, you can bring that up again if you like to add. In both these cases, Jesus notes specifically that the person continues seeking after the lost item, until he or she found them, found the item. They didn't give up. They persisted until they found it. In other words, Jesus seems to be pointing out that persistence was a needed quality for success. See, if we want to be successful in reaching the lost, then we must persist. We must persist never to give up. After all, lost sheep among spacious fields and hills 
and lost coins and the maybe dirt floor of the Jewish home would not have been easily found, isn't it? You lose a coin at home and a, a, a two dollar coin, which is small, you're not gonna find it very easily. But persistence, this woman found her coin. And it's the same way with reaching the lost. It is not easy to reach people's hearts so that they, they can receive Jesus. And sometimes it takes years and years to lead someone to the Lord. But we should not be discouraged or give up. You know, I heard of a mother uh, some years ago now. She had a dream about her son, that one day her son was going to be preaching on the pulpit. And she prayed for him, and he was, he was living in sin, continuously living in sin. And she prayed, and she prayed. Never gave up for 20 years, until one day he gave his heart to the Lord and became a, a, a preacher. Never gave up, persisted for 20 years. How many of us would last 20 years praying for someone? You know, it's not easy. It's the same way with reaching the lost. It's not easy to reach people's hearts so they receive Jesus. Reaching the lost might sound like a hopeless task sometimes, doesn't it? Seem like I've been witnessing to this person, but he won't respond or she won't respond. How many times can I continue witnessing? And so we just give up. Some people speculate that what the world is going through now is the beginning of the end times. So they give up witnessing what's too late. We're in at the end times. This, this, you know, no point witnessing to these people. They won't listen anyway. But if that is true, the end is coming. If that is true, then as Christians, our mission to reach the lost should be more urgent than ever before, isn't it? Should be more urgent now. And if it is not true, the end is not coming yet, <laughs> then it's a good opportunity to test our faith and put God's word into practice. Do we have what it takes to reach the lost? The answer, I believe, is yes. Definitely, yes. Jesus has already given us everything we need to share the good news. He has equipped us to be effective witnesses of his power, his authority, his mercy, his love. What's more, as disciples, he's given us instructions on how to go about, about this, even in the face of adversity. You might say, but... I wouldn't know what, how to witness. I, didn't, I wouldn't know how to speak to an unbeliever. What do I do? What, do, what shall I say? Where do I start? I'm not educated. I hardly went to school. I, I hardly know how to read. How do I witness? If that's you, let me tell you, you need to rely and you need to trust in the Holy Spirit. You know, <laughs> As, as many of you know, I just went to primary school, and I used to say those things. I can't witness to anyone. I don't even know anything. I wouldn't, if, if, if someone mentioned Jesus next to me, even though I was a Christian in the beginning, I would start sweating bullets. Oh, no, they mentioned Jesus. <laughs> in Matthew chapter 10, verses 19 and 20, It says, but when, you, when they arrest you, do not worry about what to say or how to say it. At that time, you will be given what to say, for it will not be you speaking, but the spirit of your father speaking through you. So let me tell you that for the most part here, the disciples were simply fishermen, political activists, and even tax collectors. How could they speak and defend themselves against the knowledge and status of the Jewish religious leaders? The answer was simple. The answer was that Jesus working through them, where the Holy Spirit 
You know how many times you're speaking to someone and these scriptures start coming up and you think, oh, I haven't heard that scripture for so long. Where did that come from? And you, as you're witnessing, you know, the other scriptures come to your mind. Scriptures that that person needs to hear. It's because the Holy Spirit is speaking through you. And in the same way as we go out in the world to tell people about our Savior, we need not to worry about our qualification. We need not worry whether we went to university or whether we went to high school or just, in my case, primary school. We don't, not, don't need to worry about those things because our own testimony of coming to know Christ will speak volumes, doesn't it? Our own testimony is what we need to be sharing. Of course, this does not mean we shouldn't be prepared. Of course, we should go prepared. In Colossians chapter 4, verse 6, it says, Let your conversations be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. Spending time, for example, reading the Bible, praying, and reflecting on God's word, that prepares us to speak about Jesus with others. But we should not worry about what should, what should we say at any given point. You'd be surprised sometimes how God put things on your heart. I shared this with the Grow Group uh, a couple of weeks ago. How I may even have shared it here some years ago. We're now going to, to a family who didn't know Christ. Someone asked me to go and um, he said, there's a family that needed Christ. They were in a lot of trouble, a lot of strife. And, and he said, could, could you go and um, talk to them? And me and Sue, we went to this family, husband and wife and three kids, oh, well, not very young kids. Um, and we spoke to them about Christianity, about giving their lives to Christ. We were there for a long time. And at the end, they said, yes, we want to give our lives to Christ. From then on, I really needed to rely on the Holy Spirit. Because as, as I laid hand on them and I couldn't pray for them, I sensed that there was something wrong in the household. And I shared with them what, what I felt the Holy Spirit was telling me. And they said, yes, yes, that's true. What you're saying is true. And then as, as, as I laid really hand on them again to pray, again, the Holy Spirit showed me something else. And I thought, oh, no. No, no, we got away with one, but two. <laughs> Holy Spirit, this better be from you. And again, they said, yes, and we need to stop doing what you're sharing with us today. And for the third time, as I laid hands on them to pray, again, God showed me something. So, so was my witness, she was there. And I thought, oh, no, if, if, if this is not true, this block is going to knock me out. <laughs> and... Um, Anyway, build the courage. It's not easy sometimes. You know, you sense the Holy Spirit is speaking. But you sometimes, you know, you start wondering, is this coming from me? Or is this coming from, uh, from the Holy Spirit? Anyway, I built the courage and I, I shared it with them. And the husband turned around and he said, now I know that God is speaking to you. He said, because the other two you've shared with me. And it, probably everyone knew that. A lot of people knew that. And you probably... Maybe you could have known. I said, I didn't know. He said, but this one you just shared with me now, no one knows. It's such a secret between me and my wife that no one ever knew. He said, yes, we're doing these things. And, and uh, they were able then to lay hands on them and, and, and um, they gave their hearts to the Lord. But you see, you go to someone's place, you go somewhere and you think, oh, what am I going to say? You'll be... You know, driving there, what shall I say? What shall I talk about? But the Holy Spirit said, you leave it to me. I'll give you the words to speak. I didn't know what to say to these people. I had the kids there with them. I didn't know what to say. But the Holy Spirit made it very clear what to say. In conclusion this morning, the re religious leaders of the day had been indifferent towards the lost. Jesus used these two parables to illustrate how wrong their response was, especially when compared to how they would have responded 
towards recovering something far of less value. Bitcoin and you know the shape, much less value than than a, a person giving their life to Jesus. Jesus pointed out how joyful they would have been at the recovery of a lost sheep or a lost coin. Certainly then, they should have been joyous instead of angered at the lost coming to Jesus. Jesus then pointed out that the one thing that matters most to God is the lost. That's all that matters to God, the lost. They matter so much to God that when the lost are found, even one of them, all heaven rejoices and throws a party in Luke chapter 15, verse 7, and also verse 10. How important it is for Jesus to see people saved. One person, if there's one person here, maybe not saved yet, or maybe one person watching online that's not saved yet. The moment you give your life to Christ, there's a party in heaven. Jesus throws a party in heaven with the angels in heaven. How important is that to our Lord to see people saved? There is more joy over one sinner coming to Jesus than over 99 people being right where they're supposed to be with God. If lost people matter this much to God, shouldn't, shouldn't they matter this much to us? How much lost people matter to us? They mean so much to our Lord Jesus Christ that he throws a party. How much more should they matter to us? Shouldn't we be willing to give everything needed in order to reach the lost? My answer is yes, and I hope your answer is yes also. So what is needed to reach the lost? From this passage, we discover that at least three things are needed. The first thing needed for reaching the lost is compassion. We need to have compassion. The second thing needed for reaching the lost is effort. We need to make an effort. And the third thing needed for reaching the lost is persistence. Don't give up. Never give up. Never think that this person will never give their hearts to the Lord. Never give up on them. Jesus would never give up on them. He never gave up on us. So just to close, Matthew chapter 5, verse 16 says, Let your light shine before others. Let your sh light shine before others. Let's pray. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Let's stand together and pray. Will you? Thank you, Jesus. Father, we do thank you, Lord God, this morning, Father, for your presence here, Lord. We know the, your Holy Spirit is here amongst us, Father. And Lord, I just pray, Lord, that we have a heart for the lost, Lord. There's so many out there, Lord God, that so many people that don't know you yet, Lord God. We have so many in our own families that don't know you, Lord. We have so many at work, Lord God, that don't know you, Father. Lord, our neighbors, Father, that don't know you yet. Give us a heart of compassion, Father, for these people. And Father, help us to make an effort, Lord God. Lord, and to be persistent, never to give up, Father, for these people. Because they mean so much to you, Lord. Father, I pray that they will mean so much to us also, Lord. Father, I just pray, Lord God, for these people, Lord God, that we will go to them. We don't wait till they come to us, Father. Because that may never happen that they will come to us. But we need to go to them. We need to tell them about Jesus. We need to tell them what they're missing out on, Father. Lord, we just, we just pray, Father, that each one of us here this morning and those watching online, Lord God, that, Father, we will have hunger in our hearts to see these people saved, Father. Let us go out there, Lord God, and encourage and, and lift people up and, and tell them about Jesus, Lord. Father, give us the words to speak, Lord, when we don't know what to say. We, we, we just pray, Father, that words will come to us through the Holy Spirit. So we can speak your word, not our word, Father. Your word, Lord God. So we just want to thank you this morning, Father, for your word. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Bless you.